In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between activity-based costing and traditional costing methods in cost accounting. Probably the most fundamental and noticeable difference between these two methods of cost accounting is that with traditional cost accounting, we're going to have one plant-wide overhead rate that's basically calculated using something like machine hours or labor hours, and we're going to just take whatever the overhead is for the plant and then we're just going to divide it by the number of machine hours, labor hours, that's going to give us one plant-wide overhead rate that we're going to then apply on the basis of either labor hours or machine hours uh, throughout the year. With activity-based costing, however, we're actually going to have multiple rates. So we're going to have multiple rates and we actually call them activity rates because as you, if you, if you remember, we're going to have a number of cost pools Right, so with activity-based costing, we, we put our overhead uh, and other items into these cost pools, uh, and then we actually calculate an activity rate for, for each, each of these pools. So traditional costing, however, is just going to have that one plant-wide rate uh, that's used to allocate overhead uh, for everything. And because of this, uh, traditional costing is much easier to implement. And when we think about if you just wanted to have a costing system, uh, you, it's easier to calculate one rate uh, than multiple ones. But in addition to that, it's not just obviously you know doing division for, for calculating a rate, uh, but it's actually ABC involves interviewing employees uh, to talk about, well, what items should be going uh, into the cost pools, which cost pools should we have, uh, and then you know kind of making estimates. Uh, about the number of orders you're going to have or these different items. So it's a very complex system and so it's going to be much more difficult to implement. Uh, and then also you have the fact that in some cases uh, employees will actually actively resist the implementation of an A-B system because they've already been doing traditional costing for years and then now somebody comes along and says we're going to do ABC costing. I want you to track the amount of time you spend on this activity, this activity, and people don't respond well to change and they might actively uh, resist the implementation of an ABC system. For, the, for all these reasons it's just easier uh, to do traditional costing and, and leave out ABC altogether. Uh, but another important difference is that traditional costing we're only talking about product costs right so when we're talking about allocating overhead we're talking about a manufacturing overhead with traditional costing but with ABC uh, we could actually be talking about period costs and if you don't remember what period costs are uh, we're talking about things like SG&A right so we might have some SG&A expense that we decide uh, is relevant that we want to be allocating to the products uh, in terms of you know customer support, people calling to complain uh, about their orders. And so we have these period costs and we may, and emphasis on may, it's not required. I mean, we do what we want at our firm in terms of what we think is relevant. Uh, but we may choose and say, hey, we want to include some of these SG&A costs and allocate some of those uh, to the products. And with activity-based costing, we can do that. Traditional costing methods, uh, we're just we're just a allocating uh, product costs and, and period costs are basically just going to be expenses incurred. We're not we're not really uh, you know allocating those to to product lines, and in part for that reason, uh, traditional costing can be used for external reports. And what I mean by that is I'm talking about we're calculating cost of goods sold. Uh, I'm not talking external reports in terms of like putting together an income statement and stuff like that, right? You have your financial accounting, your financial reporting, and that's different than, than your costing system. But even so, uh, you remember traditional costing basically arose for the need uh, to calculate uh, cost of goods sold. So we can use traditional costing to compute cost of goods sold, and the auditors will accept those methods, but they will not. Uh, for if we're using activity-based costing, right? So activity-based costing is a lot more subjective, and so we can't use it in any case for external reports uh, whatsoever. It's just strictly for internal purposes uh, to help managers with, with decision-making. And uh, as, as you might have concluded from that, then it follows that if we were to implement an ABC system, uh, we must continue then to have a traditional costing system uh, so we can continue to calculate cost of goods sold. Thus, if we're going to have ABC, we're going to have two sets of books. And what I mean by two sets of books is we're still doing a traditional costing system, 
Uh, on the one hand, maybe we've got one Excel tab where we're saying, okay, we're going to calculate cost of goods sold uh, by the traditional method for the auditors. But then for internal purposes, we're going to have a second set of books uh, where we actually have our activity-based costing figures uh, and, and calculate. So we'd actually have two different sets of profit margins, two different sets of costs. Uh, so we're, we're going to have two systems here, the ABC and traditional costing, whereas obviously if you just do traditional costing, uh, that would be sufficient. So you might be wondering at this point, well, why? We basically looked at a bunch of negatives. And so why would anybody why would anybody want to implement ABC for their firm? And the main uh, driver of doing ABC is, is simply the fact that it's much more accurate, right? We're kind of going back to this notion of just taking one uh, plant-wide overhead rate and saying, okay, we're just we're just going to say that overhead is just driven by machine hours, and that's really all we care about when we're costing out a specific product. Well, hey, wait a minute. What if this one product uh, is having all kinds of issues and it's causing people to uh, burn up our phone lines and, and talk to our customer support people a lot? Well, okay, in that case, we, we, we would be understating our costs if we didn't kind of allocate that to that product line. Or if, for example, a certain, a certain product requires a lot more uh, orders or something than, than the other product. And those types of things we're not really capturing. We just say, well, we're just going to allocate overhead based on one uh, rate that was with our machine hours, and that's it, right? So this we're just kind of doing this because it's easy, right? That's the advantage of traditional costing. It's easy. Uh, it's acceptable for GAAP, for calculating cost of goods sold. Uh, those things. But when we really want to make decisions, which is what cost accounting is all about, uh, ABC is really the method that's going to give us the most accurate cost, right? We're saying, okay, let's let's look at all the things that are driving the overhead costs, and, and let's go ahead and let's compute a rate for each cost pool, and then let's go ahead and say, okay, as that activity occurs, uh, what are the costs, how are the costs really being driven? How can we come up with the most accurate costs? And when we have the most accurate cost, then we can make the best decisions about whether to keep a product line, whether to drop a product line. These are huge decisions, and to make those decisions, uh, you need good inputs, you need good information. And so, basically, uh, ABC is superior in terms of accuracy, but again, you've got to you kind of kind of do a cost benefit analysis. I'll just put cost benefit here when you're deciding whether you want to implement an ABC system. And then, given that you have uh, decided to implement ABC, you still kind of have to keep this cost benefit uh, strategy in mind when you're deciding. Okay, well, how many cost pools do I want? I don't want a hundred cost pools, right? The employees are going to get burned out and be like, I don't want to track my time going into a hundred different cost pools. So you always have to bear in mind, you have to trade off um, this this idea of, of accuracy uh, versus cost and, and the ease of implementation. So again, you don't want to just run into your firm and say, hey, look, ABC is going to give us superior numbers. We're going to implement it. We're going to have a hundred or two hundred cost pools and we're going to find out exactly what our products cost. Uh, so even though this you know, under-costing and over-costing can have huge effects on your firm, it, it always comes back to doing a cost-benefit analysis to deciding whether ABC is good for your firm and the extent to which you should